Hopefully I won't get zapped. Ooh, woohoo! Yow! Today we're gonna do something super special. Uh, I've been hitting up these estate sales a lot lately just to try to get some CRTs and other old tech. And luckily for me, I've been able to find a few of them and I actually won some items. So today we're gonna go and we're gonna pick up those items, uh, a couple CRTs, some other hardware, and we'll see how all this goes because uh, this is always an adventure. I have to drive about an hour from my shop here to pick up the items. So let's go ahead now and hop in the old Mercury Grand Marquis, baby, and cruise on up to a little town called Markham, Virginia. Just a absolutely beautiful drive here today through the woods. I just wanted to give you a look around this, I mean, middle of nowhere where I'm at. There's a nice big house that, a lot of abandoned properties back here and then really nice houses. But that's where we're heading back from. I did get the stuff and uh, it's actually in the trunk because I had to put the bicycle back here with me. Uh, but nice drive. I'm gonna show you all the things I got here in a second because I think you're gonna have, uh, have quite an enjoyable time checking out the estate sale CRTs. All right, let's see what secrets we scored. Not a whole lot back here. First off, check it out. Did find this cool Sanyo tape deck player. Now the problem with it is that it doesn't have the power supply with it, so it's not a simple power cable. It's actually got a DC power supply right in there. So we need to figure out what we're gonna do with that. We'll take a closer look at this inside, especially if we can find a power supply for that thing. M77. 00k by Sanyo. Now the real deal is this one. The Sony Trinitron, baby. Look at this lovely, cool RF only Trinitron. I think it's RF only. Wow, yeah, look at that. UHF and VHF, my friends. Now this is the KV9400. And this is actually older than I am. It's from 1980. So we finally have scored a CRT older than me. Man, I hope this thing works. Oh, it's heavy. Let's get it down into the bunker and see how it looks. All right, let's take an opportunity to look closer at this amazing KV9000 and we'll even try a test run. Man, it's got some color, hue, and brightness adjustments over here. Auto. Okay. So I don't know. That's probably going to be wild looking if it's not been messed with in a long time. If it even turns on, right? Now, if we look back here, we've got color controls, screen, this is our uh, back of our fly bag, most likely entrance to that. Now it does have UHF and VHF connections, as I said. Okay, I've got some things set up here. First off, this little RF modulator takes composite, spits out RF, and that's connected over here. I'm thinking VHF is the right one. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I believe VHF is the frequency I want to try to get channel two or four into. I've got this little adapter that lets me go coax into this old school antenna connection. So let's hope that will give us a signal. Now when I turn on the Famicom here, I'll get a red light there. I'll get a red light here saying my uh, box is on. Actually, it's channel three or four. So we'll start with channel four. That means it's getting a signal. I do have the CRT powered, well, plugged in, not powered on. And let's do it. Let's go for an initial power test here of the KV9000. Oh my goodness, I'm kind of nervous that it's not going to work. But let's just see what happens. Oh, I think I hear some life to the set. Let's see. Oh yeah, we got some scrolling. Oh, we actually have a screen here. So let's see if we can figure out what the heck to do even with this guy or how to change channels. C7, two. Oh my gosh, I have no idea what channels these are, right? Let's try channel three on the modulator. I don't know what channels these are giving me, right? So let's go over here. Um, whoops, so that's my thing there. This is channel five, I don't know, maybe let's, Go to this one. What happens when I like scroll this around? 
It says here, turn knob until the desired channel is properly tuned. Uh, lower number channels. So I don't know. Let's see. Oh, we're getting somewhere. Um, okay, this is going to take a minute. Let me see if I can figure out how to use this old tuning machine. Holy moly, this is way crazier than anything I've ever seen before. But thankfully, the screen's working. So hopefully, it's just a matter of us getting something on there uh, to show up. So let me work a little bit more with this whole setup, and we'll see if we can't get a screen or a nice image on there for you. All right, well, that only took me about 20 minutes to try to figure out, but you can tell I've got a picture on here now. Just the normal picture. I'm going to try to turn down the brightness on there some so you can get a better look at it. We've got all colors. It did take a while to tune this. It definitely is the VHF. And then I had to go in here and do the old school tuning of a number between two and four. And that's what I've got here. So let's just let's just check out something on here. How about Super Metroid since it's got a lot of dark backgrounds? Look at this. I mean, there's definitely noise in the image. Because, I mean, it's not been serviced, of course, but it looks pretty good right now. I love that glass overlay. Or it's not glass, it's actually plastic. But yeah, what do you think? Let's see. Let's see if we can get some volume. Yeah, we have... Definitely have sound. Wow. So yeah, there you go. Interesting picture, huh? Let's turn it down. Cool. Well, at least this one works. Now, I did only pay $22 for this. I think I paid 20% fees on top of that, so another $5 almost in fees for the auction house. And that's about it. I'm probably gonna do some more things with this TV. Look at this, this is an auto color setting because you can adjust colors on it too. Look at that. If you like, you can adjust the hue and temperature of colors. Well, I've got my CRT all torn open here. I thought I'd get in and see a little bit more about what was going on inside of here. First off, here's our tube number. It's a 250AKB22 with an orange Trinitron label that is made in Japan. Here's our lovely yoke. Pretty nice yoke for a nine inch tube. And then if you see here, I don't actually want to discharge this tube. That This is the weird setup that is on actually the 2530 PVM, which I've never seen a breakout like this on a smaller one. That's kind of interesting to me. This uh, little contraption here probably, yes, it, it is going to control our horizontal static convergence. If we spin that wheel, and we'll do some of that, in a minute when I start it back up, but that means that this has that style of anode cap where there's like a little plastic connector under there. And if you mess that up, it's really easy to snap a little piece of it off. And if you mess that up, uh, you'll never get the picture to look quite right. And you can't find a replacement for these anymore. So just to look down here, this is where all our power and deflection is down in here, the flyback transformer neck board has a lot of color controls on there. Everything's looking pretty good. I mean, I'm going to clean it a little more, but other than that, it doesn't look too bad. Over here's more color controls and really tuning controls for the set over on this side. And, uh, and if we look over here, this is the top. I did take the speaker out, which is a nice shielded, look at that shielded uh, 1.5 watt, 8 ohm Sony speaker. And then this is the top. I've taken this all apart just to try to clean it a little more. I'm going to try to avoid taking out all the channel selectors and things. This is about as far as I want to take this apart. But I'd also like to get the screen out and try to clean under the front. But I don't want to take the whole TV apart. We'll see if this is even possible uh, here in a second. I'm going to try to move some things around, see if I can get that tube maybe moved out to the side over here a little bit and not have to worry about tearing down everything because like I don't want to remove the flyback at all. All right, let's see what I can figure out. All right, well, the entire CRT, as you can see, has been broken all the way down. And I had to remove the tube and the chassis and everything in one bundle like this. I could break some of these boards out, 
make it a little easier. But again, I don't want to mess up that flyback at all because if I do, it is toast and this TV is pretty worthless after that. There's another look at that tube number down there and our deflection yoke right up in here and then our neck of our tube. And then if we look over the boards a little bit, this is our CRT socket right there on this neck board. And we have some adjustments on here, but this is a really old school neck board. You see that's a primitive early design for the CRT socket itself in there that Sony eventually changed. Uh, that's quite interesting. But you have color controls up here, manual color controls by these variable uh, potentiometers, resistors, resistant potentiometers that are going to have variations. Uh, then you can actually adjust them from the other side. So you have the three colors over here and then your drives for, what is that, just green and blue there. Down here you have a G2 adjustment and then over here is the focus adjustment. Down there, right there, that's focus and that can again be adjusted on the back side thankfully. It's got this nice plastic shield right here so you won't uh, hurt yourself and accidentally shock yourself when you're back here looking at it. That's a pretty nice touch. A lot of this stuff is pretty well isolated and protected so you couldn't You'd have a hard, harder time shocking yourself with this than you may think, uh, but I'm sure somebody could do it. Anyway, that's a look inside here. This is our main board. Uh, look, this is our hot and our flyback over here. I don't know. What do you think? Has that been has that been worked on before? I'm not sure. That's pretty nasty over in there. Just some flux and stuff over in here. I'm not sure, uh, but. Maybe, maybe it was done in factory. A lot of this stuff probably would have still been hand soldered back in that day. And so that's, uh, that's all our boards broken out. And the thing I really wanted to do was clean up this bezel. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get in here, clean up the sludge and stuff from the inside of this bezel. And um, the plastic overlay is actually one piece kind of melted inside this frame. So that's going to be interesting to clean because I can't, I don't think I can get that out of there. I haven't figured out a way to without busting some plastic like rivets, you see, like, is that a rivet there? And there's some things like that. Anyway, I'm going to do my best to clean it and then we'll come and hopefully get it set back up in one piece. I've got a little bit of an experiment set up. I'm going to do some adjustments back here behind the set. And as I do them, I'm going to slowly show you what happens on the screen with my phone camera up there. So I'm going to set this down here and I'm going to spin some of these potentiometers over here. Move this. There we go. Got that camera set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this one for the horizontal static convergence control and watch the front of the screen. I'm turning it and do you see how on the screen you have complete separation horizontally of red, green, and blue. So the guns are just not aim or the gun is not aiming all the colors in the right spot. So if you turn this horizontal static convergence to the correct spot you should have a uniform beam. There you go. If you go too far the other way, same thing happens. Blue, green, red, or red, green, and blue. But you try to get them all matched them up as matched up as best as you can. Something like that. And that's how you adjust it. Now let's see. The next one I'd like to do is going to be the focus, which is down here. I'm not sure. Hopefully, I won't get zapped. Ooh! Woohoo! Yow! Did you see that? Woohoo! I did uh, ground my finger out on that stupid heat sink there and <laughs> caught a little zap. I'm sure you saw that on the screen. I will not edit that out because I'm not a scaredy cat. I'm just going to have to do it again. And I don't mean shock myself, so I'm not going to try that way. Okay. 
That's too big. Holy moly, that was a Zapparino. There we go. I finally got it in there. Now I'm going to spin it safely this time. And it doesn't really have a whole lot of effect on the screen. There we go. Just a little bit of movement on the beam. Not really worth messing with too much. Alright. That's it for that. Here's the front screen area. And I want you to notice this has a really light gray tube. And partially uh, to help that is this darkened overlay that was included on top of the TV. And as I said before, you can definitely remove this. Now, I was totally wrong earlier. You can remove this. It actually fell out while I was cleaning. And if I look up here, there's a couple slots where it can just slide in. And you can do like that, kind of, and push it in. But before I take and put it all back together, I want to show you the inside of this shell because it may be helping or hurting, I mean, uh, my reception a little bit on my tuner and my RF signal. Look in here, there's, there's our antenna, right? It goes actually through here, and then there's a cable up in here, and I redid all this. Uh, and cleaned out all in here but there's that and it goes around to this point which has actually got a screw in it and that screw comes in under here and connects in right where my finger is and that's part of the antenna loop so maybe that'll help clear up some of my snow I'm having very light snow issues on my picture still but I wanted to show you that here's the inside of this shell when it's all cleaned up now uh, there's some interesting pictures here which i'll show you about the inside of this it's pretty nice well i've been toying around with the signal here a little bit more and i'm actually not so much seeing a clarity increase from from adding that screw there now i'm sure it's working better uh, and back to its normal intention, but I'm still getting a lot of um, RF noise on this set. Now, not a ton, but more than I would off newer sets, which I guess makes sense for a 43-year-old tuner. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are seeing is the completely fixed, restored, and ready-to-go Sony KV-9400. It is running in crispy, beautiful RF here. We have the Super Nintendo and Earthworm Jim. And yes, it looks glorious. And I wanted to give you one last shot of this amazing CRT. How about that? Looks so good. Okay, just to give you a, a final run through, you know, we've got our lovely tray up here that I've set to channels. And you can come in here and tune to channels that you need to. There's not too many options at this point. Got our picture adjustment. And then our volume. Oh yeah. So that's nice. The speaker's right in here. This is our antenna. And then our screen does have that overlay on it. So that kind of does help on the softer image due to that RF fuzz, which sometimes you get. I mean, right now I'm not getting any RF fuzz, so it looks really nice. I love the patina on these old sets. Just came out wonderful. Here's our little hue and color adjustment knobs down here. And this is our auto color, which it's off right now, but it's so tuned in that you can barely tell the difference between on and off. We have a brightness control over here. On the other side, there's nothing really on the other side there. Down at the bottom you do have a couple of earphones for mono earphone input. There's our input board, right? What a lovely input board. How, how high tech, how wonderful of an input board. Easy enough, right? Well folks, there you have it. Such a wonderful, fun little novelty CRT. I mean, you could play video games on this like, like it's sitting now. It's not a big deal. But it's not something I would think you would want to use it's like your daily CRT 
if you had another option. And the great thing about this one is it's nine inches. It's an iconic Sony. It's from the 1980s. It works perfectly, I guess, as intended, you could say. Uh, but all around, you could get much newer CRTs and get a better picture experience, unless this is what you're looking for, you know? So I don't really consider this a high usable CRT. Again, more of a fun, novelty, beautiful art piece that works that you can get a signal into if you go to more lengths. I mean, right now I'm using a RF modulator and I'm going in really with just RF into this set. So anyway, what do you guys think? What do you think of this set? Does it make you want to buy more old sets? Does it make you want to look for specifically an old Trinitron maybe? Let me know what you think in the comments below and please leave a like for me if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.